The What's Neat This Week video podcast is supported by enthusiastic model railroaders just like you. Additional support is provided by Athern Trains. Check out all their new monthly announcements at athern.com. The National Model Railroad Association, where membership has its benefits. Check out their website at nmra.org. Additional support for What's Neat This Week is brought to you by Soundtracks, industry leaders in model railroad sound and technology for over 30 years. Now please visit our website at soundtracks.com and at checkout, be sure to use the promo code WNTW15 for 15% off of your purchases. And while you're there, be sure to check out our YouTube channel and other information that we have on our website to help you get more familiar with Model Railroader Reader's Choice Award winner two times for Favorite Sound Decoder. Additional support is provided by Yelzma Graphics, America's leading distributor of quality railroad art and embroidered clothing since 1985. Check out their website at yelzma.com. Further support is provided by the NCE Corporation, the power of DCC. Visit their website at ncedcc.com. And thank you for supporting the What's Neat This Week podcast. This is the What's Neat This Week, show number 133 on this beautiful day of October 17th, 2020. I've got a gr group of great guys with me this evening, and I'm going to do formal introductions. First of all, I am Ken Patterson, the host of the What's Neat Show over at Model Railroad Hobbyist Magazine. And tonight I've got with me on stage Sugar Joshua, Sugar Fire Barton. Sh sh sugar Joshua. Sugar <laughs> Fire, everybody. <laughs> I've got Mike Buddy with me tonight. Hey, everybody. On Skype, in Skype land, I've got George Bogatok down in Durango, Colorado. Hello, George. Howdy, fellas. And I've also got Charles Getz. Charlie Getz, you remember him as being the president of the NMRA some time back. Hi, Charlie. Hello there, everybody. you got to oh. pardon me for being a little frazzled. We literally had the electric off all day here today. Um, it just came on 30 minutes before we started recording this show, so we had a whole few minutes to get show notes done, get everything off the Internet, but we literally thought we were going to be doing a show with a lantern on the table. <laughs> and I've got to tell you, the jacket hanging up behind me lit up really well on, the, uh, on this lantern shot I just showed you. What is that, Mike? I don't know. My phone, sorry. That's okay. Also, <laughs> also today, i got to tell you what, the reason the electric went out is because we had extremely high winds. Um, so I spent most of the day blowing leaves on the Garden Railroad out there, just trying to clear it up. The leaves are a big hassle because oh, Garden man. Railroad trains don't like to run over leaves. They w it will derail them. But it was a beautiful fall day. Oh, it was absolutely incredible. It Look was. at this shot of the river. The colors are just starting to change here in Missouri, and the river is lower than it was last week, as you see this run by. Uh, I got a fly a run by today, a flyby today by two bald eagles, I, and I don't have video of that. I wish wow. I did to show huh. you. They just they hover right above the bluff, about 50 feet, and unlike turkey vultures, they actually look at you. Yeah. So when they're flying by, they're like great big flying dogs, yeah. and they look right at you. And you, it's it's the most magnificent, beautiful. Uh, experience that I had today and I just wanted to share it with you and I wish I had video I grabbed the video yeah. camera out there and tried to get it and they wouldn't come back for the uh, <laughs> video camera all right so with that um, I guess we're going to talk to Charles Getz out there because Charles you sent us some beautiful photographs of your modeling and I also well, know that you. you've been you've worked with Bob Brown over at the Gazette the narrow gauge Gazette which is an absolutely magnificent that's the one magazine you never throw away you always save your copies right. because Absolutely. I, that's where we learned how to work scratch build. Mm -hmm. It was Narrow Gauge Gazette that taught us board by board individual right. staining. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and it's, it's weathering. Yeah. So Charles, go ahead and tell us about these amazing photographs that you sent us. You sent us about seven photographs. Well, actually, these are all work photographs because all of those are things that I've built for uh, either review in the magazine or. Uh, a, a column I'm doing in November on a uh, what I call a mega kit uh, by Bar Mills called Queen City Coal, mm -hmm. uh, which I expanded and uh, tweaked and modified. And so that's what those photos are. Berkshire Valley makes these fabulous little HO wagons. 
Oh. Uh, and they've been releasing those. Uh, they're kind of filling in for the Jordan wagons that no longer exist because Jordan no longer exists. Uh, and then uh, I think I have a picture of a, a Showcase Miniatures 1929 uh, REO speed wagon truck, which nice. um, which is a, a nice new kit. Uh, and I believe I sent you a picture of a Walther's, of all things, Cornerstone, new one. Which is a vintage auto dealer. Yeah, with I was, that's windows, the one I was looking at. That Ford Art dealership. Deco, nice. And I added an interior and some lighting and and some neon lights uh, to that uh, just for fun in the windows. Very nice. Uh, and I just finished another Walther's kit. Uh, of all things, a '50s motel uh, highway, you know, Route 66 kind of complex, which I will be reviewing. But the um, uh, it's just it's just something to uh, keep me off the streets during COVID, you know, doing all this modeling and writing it up for for Bob in the Gazette. I've been writing for the Gazette since day one. Uh, wow. the magazine started in 1945, uh, 1945, 1975. Wow. Seems that way. Wow. I was say. And uh, so they're, I've been they're writing a column ever yeah. since. So yeah. Bob says it's the longest running continuous column by the same author in model railroad history which gives me a very very small universe to be first in wow uh, I'm very excited about <laughs> that's <laughs> quite commendable yeah uh, Charles. very much so now that magazine that's about 40 years isn't it 45 45 years, years. 45 or years 45th year wow. yeah yeah when we hit 50 we all retire and die Oh my let's well, so hope not no <laughs> no i don't i don't look forward to any of that yeah <laughs> Well, then Chris Lane takes over, so it'll be fine. Oh, I love Chris Lane. Shout out to Chris Lane. Rock and yeah, roll. Yeah, Chris is a great guy. He Chris is. Chris is terrific. When I built Leitner Trestle, and that was uh, on the Rio Grande Southern, Leitner Trestle mm -hmm. was a trestle where they put, I believe, Highway 61 or 51 right through the trestle. In fact, you uh, own my trestle. I own it, yes, yeah. sir. Um, we featured that uh trestle and chris lane did the editing on that piece for me where i literally showed how to build it from the ground up mm -hmm. do you remember what milepost that was charles was that milepost 160 on the rio grand southern well i wouldn't know offhand but i know where it is uh it's somewhere in that area yeah just an absolutely somewhere. magnificent yeah. project absolutely um, beautiful yeah. i probably just I showed that, you photographs. i saw that you, you did a great job on that but i guess i'm really here to talk about this nmra exhibit at the california state railroad museum which is uh, underway in a sense of being installed finally with COVID delay of six to eight months. Um, and I kind of brought a show and tell, which is really unfair because I'm holding it up to my little camera wow. on my iPhone. Ooh, look at that. Does that say Gorian saying, Defeated on it? That, that is a Gorian Defeated combination car from John Allen. Wow. Built oh in 1947. Wow. Yes. wow. And uh, built by John in 1947. It is going to be one of the exhibits along with his recreated, two recreated Gorian defeated locomotives uh, by that crazy Japanese wonderful modeler, Kenichi Matsumoto, wow. who restored them. So they're not, they're not reproduc re reproductions. They are the original burnt locomotive brought back. Number eight, which used to pull this, uh, which a very fancy uh, early uh, 440, and uh, uh, number uh, 10, which is a uh, kind of like a dockside, which he uh, he has restored. So, wow. but this exhibit wow. is called the, the the magic of scale model railroading, and what it is is for the layperson, because the California State Railroad Museum gets six hundred thousand visitors a year. It is one of the wow. it's the eighth biggest attraction in California, hmm. most popular. <clears throat> 800, wow. uh, 600,000 paid visitors a year. Man. A lot of those are school kids, and a lot of those are seniors on that's tour. That's amazing. Yeah. So that's our audience. So we are uh, the NMRA, and it's a million-dollar exhibit. We have, th purely through fundraising, there's not one dollar of member dues in this, we have, um, uh, have a world-class, unprecedented exhibit that is, and I'll, I'll rep ramble off real quick the elements, It'll start out when you will first go in with a, uh, a wall-sized picture of John Allen's Gorian Defeated in color. Absolutely gorgeous thing to show what model rarity is, to grab you by the lapels. And then you're going to see some of the best modeling anywhere. You're going to see uh, Smuggler's Cove, built by Australia, Asian region, built by Jeff Knott, some of these crazy mm -hmm. MMRs in Australia. It's a New England HON30 mythical New England uh, layout scene it's absolutely stunning it's been in the gazette 
Then, then is the San Juan Central, Comback's yes. Seminole HON3, yeah. 1988, yeah. yeah, which I used to own and is now up there, all fully restored. You're going to see Chama SN3, uh, the uh, PBL built uh, yard, which is absolutely accurate for Chama in the 1950s. Uh, you're going to see uh, Irv Schultz, a name that may not mean a lot to some people, but he did turn of the century Michigan iron ore railroading. And he has an ore dock and a loading facility in a bay that we have, which is spectacular. Jim Vale, a name that you would recognize from the Gazette, Jim Vale Sawmill, the late Jim Vale. Uh, we have um, uh, a number of other uh, modules. And against that's that's just when you walk in. That's what you see wow. in, a, in one gallery. <laughs> Behind wow. you is going to be a timeline wall that's about 50 feet long of the history of scale model railroading that starts with a... Uh, poem in 1844 describing a garden railway. 1844, live wow. steam garden railway. No it goes to the Titanic. The Titanic has a connection to model railroading. Believe it or not, it does. Wow. Okay. And, uh, with, because, uh, now just very quickly, when it went down in May 1912, it took the entire American shipment of the only uh, ra model railroad magazine out of England that existed and took all the American subscribers' copies with it. And oh so the very next issue of that yeah. magazine, oh my God. the very next issue of that magazine, the publisher apologized to his American readers, saying that, I'm sorry you didn't get your May issue, went down with the Titanic. Oh. So, <laughs> wow. Anyway, it ends all the way with uh, George's and uh, Nancy Workman's and, and Steve's stuff uh, with a decoder from, uh, from uh, Soundtracks. Uh, on the digital age, at the, the at the end of that timeline, Very then cool. you turn a corner and go into an even bigger gallery. I mean, this is big space we have; uh, it's over fifteen hundred square feet. Wow. You go into another gallery, and in that we have what we call a wall of trains, forty feet long, eight feet tall, thirty different shelves, all scales, full size trains, full length trains uh, of of all different eras and times. That's you amazing. name it, we got it. That's cool. Uh, there's an NMRA, a small NMRA exhibit explaining what the NMRA is. There is a what we call a parts wall. It is a wall that has how to become a model railroader, what steps you take, what decisions you make, some of the products that are available uh, when, you, when you're building a model railroad. We have a, uh, about a 4 by 12 model railroad under construction, the three phases of construction. It'll be operable. So you push a button and it runs. Oh, cool. And then yeah. at the yeah. very end, the very end, we have two exhibits called, one's called the Operator's Corner, and there's Tony Custer's CTC machine. Wow. That's right. Tony told us about yeah. that. Which Seth Newman has, uh, has wired up so that with a push button, it'll operate as if it is really running through an operating session yeah. oh. with all the lights and all the switches moving, and above that, a fast clock. And then you have John Allen's original time saver singed by the fire but there it is hanging above that on the other oh, wow. side you have what we call modeler's corner and there we're going to have <coughs> models from john allen we have models from uh Whit towers altruist and lone pine bill mcclanahan and a whole host of other people famous and not famous from all eras showing uh what model railroading is all about so this exhibit in its entirety is designed to get people interested in the hobby explain what it is and hopefully get them downstairs to the gift shop where they can pick up books and, and magazines on model railroading. Nice. So that's the purpose of it. Yes. Hmm. Is this display completed, or are you guys still in construction? Next week, Bob and I return up there after a COVID lapse, and we will be uh, getting uh, ho hopefully, hopefully getting it finished. Uh, it's not being done by amateurs. A company called Gizmo out of San Francisco that does Disney yeah. work and major work wow. uh, is, is doing the install. Uh, we're helping with the uh, things that only model railroaders can help with, like setting models in and, and all that. And uh, this should be finished by the end of October, early November. It was supposed oh. to open a year ago, but because of COVID, yeah. you know, that's what happens. Right. So we hope it'll open soft opening uh, as early as <laughs> November. Uh, and then we'll have a grand opening sometime at the beginning of the year after the holidays. Wow. And there will be a lot of press on it in the model press, from model railroader to the NMRA magazine to to uh, even the Gazette, there will be articles about this thing. And everybody has got to come and see this. This is going to be absolutely spectacular. That's amazing. Wow. George, what do you think about that? I'm 
ready to come out and visit you guys yeah. and see this thing. That's <laughs> no pretty kidding. impressive. You know, being, being a model railroader myself since I was a kid, uh, hearing a lot of those mm-hmm. names, and I'd love to see a lot of those models and just, you know, right. I grew, I, I lived half of this, you know, or a lot of this life timeline, and it's just impressive to see this the collection of stuff you have out there. I can't wait to get out and see you guys. That's awesome. Oh, great. We're, you're welcome out. And uh, and if anybody wants to own a piece of John Allen's uh, uh, collection, we actually, the NMRA is running a an auction right now. Right now. Uh, open to NMRA members. Sorry about that, folks who aren't. But there's a good reason to join. And yes. i got to tell you, there's some bargains to be had. There are some burnt cars and uh, ties that John uh, ties that John stained, little Man. baggies full of, uh, honest to God, glory and defeated ties and things like that. So all price ranges. And any bid will be considered. I mean, it could be a buck. You could make it five bucks. And the odds are you may get something. So uh, it's online. Uh, it's at our website, uh, John Allen Auction. Uh, I don't get any kickback, so I'm just plugging this because it's a good thing. But it's honestly, it's a stuff from John Allen's basement that his neighbor kids were allowed to take out by his brother a few weeks after John died. And for all of these years, they have zealously guarded this stuff. And that is where this this car came from, wow. and that is where we got a bunch of other intact stuff, including the original Gory control panel, mm-hmm. still intact. Wow. And we have wow. it on display. It'll be on display in, in the exhibit as well. But the stuff that we had too many of, like a whole lot of burnt freight cars, we have a lot of those. Uh, we, we're, we're selling because uh, it helps raise money. And we want to give people a chance who really love John Allen a chance to get something he owned right. uh, from singed magazines to singed freight cars. Uh, and you might think, well, why would I want a burnt freight car? My God, this was on the Gory and Defeated. Yeah, it has yeah, the Baker no Cup. Right. Now, I Charles, mean, it's bragging rights. So there was a total of 40 items on there, and I just did a screen roll while you were talking, Charles, and showed everybody. That's what you guys just saw while Charlie was talking, was those 40 items. And when does that auction end? It ends, I believe, uh, the end of this month, October 31st. Okay. So, so you have a time. couple more weeks, so right. don't don't delay it. Right. And and there are a number of lots that have no bids on them yet. So uh, it isn't like you you have to bid $5 million to get something. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, just go ahead. If you like something, make a bid. If you don't get it, okay, bid on a bunch of things. And, and if you get too many, well, you can sell one and make a profit. I mean, well, you know, don't, I don't want to hear about it, but, but, but go ahead and <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and at least uh, look at it, and thanks for the screen roll, because that helps. Absolutely. Yeah. You were going to say something? I was just going to ask when that was over, oh, okay. when the auction was over. Uh, Charles, one last thing. Give us the NMRA website for folks that do want to join the NMRA and share in the camaraderie, the spirit, the wonderful insurance <laughs> program, and sure. all the other benefits that the NMRA has to offer. It's very easy. It says NMRA.org, and uh, you'll find uh, all sorts of information. Or if you're lazy and you don't want to do the .org, Google NMRA. Yes, you can do and that. Yes. If, if you get the National Motorcycle Racing Association, don't join them. Uh, <laughs> right. You can also Look Google the California State Railroad Museum. I did that this week because Charles told me about it, mm-hmm. and I was blown away. This They've got the... Uh, uh, that Southern Pacific articulated the cab. Oh, no kidding. The they cab, have a cab, mm-hmm. forward. cab forward. That's right. Oh. That's that beautiful model I think Intermountain came out with. Mm-hmm. Next week, we're going to have some the Intermountain flat cars on the show. That's going to be great. Also, on next week's show, um, we are going to have uh, the folks from TCS Ooh, on the show. Nice. Dan's going to be on the show. Remember, Dan, he was on the show once before mm-hmm. with some exciting news. That company just makes magnificent product. And uh, we have been selling them out of those throttles. Those throttles, they are they, they are keeping are up with cool. the manufacturing. And I've just changed batteries in mine. I change batteries in mine every five days because I've been using it religiously on my layout. I spent three days down here cleaning and running trains this week. And that that TCS throttle is amazing because it works with my Digitrack system and it also works with my NCE system. So I've been using both systems this week to run trains. Mm. And I'm telling you what, it's it's the best hobby in the world. And it's it's one of those things that George Bogatuck and I talked about on the phone earlier uh, this week. And that was the fact that part of model railroading is the organization of your layout room and your layout space. And mine gets an absolute total disarray because you've got five projects going on at one time. And it's like you, it evolves. You don't yeah. notice the mess, mm-hmm. but you certainly notice it when it's clean. But, George, you were talking about this week how important it is to keep your layout room and your workspace efficient. Do you want to elaborate about that? Well, sure, because, 
I mean, I've, I've gone and visited a lot of layouts and, and you can tell the ones that are really meticulous about cleaning the, the layout itself tends to be a lot, you know, for lack of a better term, a little bit more professionally uh, presented. And, uh, you know, I mean, everybody's got the, the space under the layout here. It's kind of hard to see in the screen here, but I've just got a curtain holding it. I mean, we've got um, shelves and things like that under it, but we want to make it look organized and just kind of like what you were talking about, because there's been some layouts that I've been to where I had to step over wood piles to get to <laughs> different sections of the layout. And then, you know, and the other side of it, too, quite frankly, is, I mean, you have to be religious about not putting stuff on the layout. Um, it's, it'd be really easy for us to put stuff here and store it. Cause it's this, you know, flat section, there's nothing yep. else there, but then what happens is then it becomes a little less funded to, to run on because now you have to clear all the clutter out and where are you going to put it? Well, let's throw it on the floor for the time being, <laughs> Absolutely. you know, so, oh my gosh. That's my so house. you know, I mean, I think the, the, the cleanliness and the organization I think are extremely important and Ken, I, I know you and I've talked about this before, but one of the things I have, one of the elements I have under my layout is actually a place where I can put all my hockey gear yes. and let it dry out overnight so that the next day when I go play again, I've got dry gear and everything. And I'm sending you some pictures so you can kind of see how that's laid out. Nice. But hmm. it's just a curtain rod on the cantilevers that are holding the layout up. Nice. And, you know, so organization and space management is really important, I think, anyway, to help giving a nice professional presentation of the layout that's amazing and you've been playing hockey a lot this week and last week i mean the season you're going full steam ahead aren't you oh yeah i've been on the ice i think we've been two weeks now i think i've been on the ice 12 or 13 times already this you know this session so i'm loving it we're finishing up wow. last season we're starting the new season um there's been times i've played two or three times a day so it's it's Get out there and enjoy it while we can. That's awesome, George. Now, George, I've got the brand new Atherin 4014. That's the big boy that's presently mm -hmm. been restored and is running. Actually, they're not running now yes. because of COVID. But once you know COVID's Correct. over with, uh, that engine's going to be back out on the tracks running again. And the amazing thing about this Atherin unit, as you were explaining to me, and you've sent us this photograph, the Soundtracks team went out and got an exclusive to get the actual sounds of 4014. So when you get the that after unit, you've got the only model on the market out there wow. that's got the actual big that's boy impressive. sounds recorded yeah. digitally with all the current technology that they've got. Tell us about how cool that was out there recording that, George. Well, unfortunately, I didn't get to go. Um, apparently, we found out, I think it was 6 p.m. the night before, and we're told to be out there by 8 a.m. the yeah. next day, and they were doing the test run. And this was the trip before they went to Southern California. Okay. Um, so this was, they were gone for, what was it, a month, month and a half or something like that. And so they were doing another test run real quick down to Greeley and back. And we were able to send somebody out there and get the recordings for us. Nice. Um, but, you know, when we loaded it into the decoder, we've got the exhaust chuff, the bell, the whistle. Um, we've got the air compressors. And we even have the feed water heater, or the feed water system. Okay. Um, and that's a unique feature that we haven't had before because we haven't had a recording of that. We've typically had the injectors. So one of the injectors, the, the lifting type injector, was replaced with the feed water. So you've got the actual sounds of that big boy all preloaded into that decoder and selected. Now, you do still get all the whistles and so forth. So if you do want to change it up or try different ones, they're still loaded into the decoder. But the 4014 that you have there is preloaded with those sounds. And Absolutely. so we're really excited about that. Um, like you said, it is exclusive. We are the only ones that have gotten a chance to get out there and get those recordings because the first trip, you know, we, we're, we're pretty good friends with Ed Dickens and the group out there. Yeah, and the first guy. trip they yes. just told us, yeah, the first trip they told us to kind of hang tight a little bit. Let's just see how this trip goes first. And then the second trip they were saying, okay, let's come out and let's do this recording. So we were able to get out there quickly. And so one of the other things we did is, as you'll see in this uh, screenshot, is we actually now have the big boy sounds available on our TSU 2200, the 21 PNEM8, and the 1100 that you can now upgrade and install into your big boys. So if you have a model that you've already had with a big boy, you can upgrade the sound and get those sounds of the 4014. So we're calling it the TSU Big Steam, and it's basically the sounds of the big boy that have been plugged in to replace some of the other sounds, and it's a exclusive that you can get through select retailers or, or 
on our website at soundtracks.com and it'll be one of the things you'll see on the home landing page but um, these things have been doing extremely well and selling really well oh, so yeah. we're really oh, excited yeah. about it and the ability to be able to put it in all the different scales is what's really got us excited about it because those in scale big boys and all the ho big boys that have been put out over the years um now we have the actual prototypical uh sound for those models so we're really excited about it so be sure to check those out and ken we're going to extend our discount code again for you uh mm -hmm. so what's neat this week viewers uh, when you go to checkout, type in WNTW15, and you'll get 15% off your order at Soundtracks.com. Wow, nice. so that includes 15% off the big boy decoder? Yes, sir. Oh, oh rock and roll. That's awesome. <laughs> Thank so you, Nancy. So you can get Thank that you, right on the website. Yes. Like I said, or you can select check select retailers because it is available for them as well, but not everybody's stocking it. So be sure to check out your retailer and then check on our website. That's awesome. One other thing is we do have a YouTube video that we posted on our YouTube channel that you can see soundtracks videos that I did an upgrade installation to a uh, Precision Craft Models Broadway Limited Big Boy that I had converted to Tsunami, original Tsunami years ago. And we go through step by step what it takes, remove that decoder, replace it with the Tsunami 2 Big Steam, and then we show you kind of some of those sounds. So you can check that out on our, on our YouTube channel now. That's amazing. Man, this show is just like cable TV because this week on cable TV they were yeah. doing a lot of interviews, right. and I seen one announcer after the other announcer all apologizing for their Skype or Zoom the or delay. whatever internet. Yeah. The internet is not perfect, right. is it? No, it's but not. But George still looks perfect tonight. Now, Mike, before you talk about the vehicles you brought tonight, and must be something wrong it. with this camera. <laughs> 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 Before you talk about yeah. your vehicles, Mike, um, I've got this amazing jacket hanging up behind me here. And this is a GMNO yep. uh, from Denny Yelzma. He sent that here this week. And Denny's going to be on the show on November 7th. He's coming to St. Louis. He's driving up here, isn't he? Uh, today we talked about flying. So now I'm going to pick him up at the airport. Okay. He's going to fly up here, which Good. makes sense. He'll be a, a little bit more refreshed. That'll save him 16 hours of driving. He wants to be on the show. He's a brass, avid brass collector, passenger mm -hmm. car collector, modeler, and he's got a lot of great stories to tell. Just an amazing individual. But the fact is, when we talk about his jackets, and I always say yelzma.com, go check it out. The gentleman's got 1,300 different logos on that website. Yeah. And, okay, great. They're logos. We've seen silk screen. We talk about stitching, all this different stuff. These are stitched. This right. is sewn. And the amazing thing I didn't know is this is art. And let me explain to you why. There are 200,000 individual stitches to create this. The machine that they use automatically changes color. It took 11 hours for that machine to print this jacket. Wow. So this is really art. This is art, technological art, where these machines are able to do that degree of detail. Right. I mean, the different shades of red, you can tell how it, mm -hmm. it forms the contour of the nose and everything. I mean, uh, that's, that's really impressive. I am blown away by so, it. They've even got the headlight lit. Does it take 11 hours just to do one jacket or just the original one? One jacket. This jacket wow. took 11 hours to print, and all this thread, it's got a sheen to it. Wow. It's shiny. Yeah. Yeah. You can wash these. And every time we talk about Denny stuff, folks that watch the show actually call him or go to the website and make purchases. Mm -hmm. He sold some towels this week, some jackets this week. He's very thankful for the viewers and the business that's contributed to his business. Mm. Oh, good. And he's coming to St. Louis to share all of his models, but check it out, his website, yelzma.com. Denny Yelzma, I absolutely love him. What a great guy, a lot of great stories, and I'm looking forward to your visit on the 7th. Yeah. Mike, go ahead and... Launch into your well, vehicle. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Joshua I, wants to say something. Go ahead, Joshua. I just want to say that the quality of Denny's stuff, I have a jacket, I have a hat, I have a shirt, and it's amazing quality. You know, me being a bigger guy, I need those bigger garments, you mm -hmm. know, and his stuff fits great, and it's real durable, and it, you know, doesn't wear. I have a whole yeah. new appreciation for what it, goes into making something like this. Absolutely. Um, he told me that our What's Neat jackets... Those have got 25,000 stitches to create Man. that. 25,000. This has got 200,000. That's amazing. That's amazing. I can't yeah. get my head around. That's, yeah. that's worse than decaling a stack train. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. yikes. Go ahead, Mike. So, Shoot. You've got some gorgeous models on the table. Well, first of all, I, I want to uh, <laughs> ask George if he found out that I was going DCC finally. 
I have not heard that actually. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Uh, and I'll extend the offer. If you have any questions or get stuck, reach out. Just give me a shout, Ken. Give him my number and uh, okay. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll be here to help you out, my friend. Yeah, yeah Caboose yeah. out in Lakewood, Colorado. Our friend Chris Palomares is out there. Right. Is getting uh, you a, a used, full blown system. Right. It's you. It's a used system, which is perfect for me. That's right. And uh, yeah, and I'm really excited. And that's uh, NCE, right? Yes, NCE, and that's the what's it called, James? It's called the James your gear. Come over here and say hi to everybody. He's in the room tonight, and in November's what's neat video, you'll get to see James's track mobile. You did right. the edit. And you're also working with Joe Fugate, aren't you, as an editor now? Yeah, that's right. I was uh, just kind of bogged down with assignments, so I couldn't do much <laughs> for the show this week. Work, work, work. <laughs> that's awesome to have you here tonight. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, Mike, talk about your vehicles. Yeah. And I'm going to actually, you need to leave these with me so I can shoot okay. the video that they're about to watch of them. Right, yeah. Still pictures. Go ahead. But I also wanted to uh, tell George I can really mm -hmm. identify with the, uh, what happened? Oh, no. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did I kick something? It's okay, they're back. Oh, ah, yeah. excellent. Look, this is a live show. The electric <laughs> yeah. was off, and we made it, and we've got good sound. Right, I still got video. Talk yeah. about your cars. We'll yeah, start at... Right. Do you remember show number 11? Uh, yes. The, the electric actually yeah. went off on that while show. While we were doing it. While we yeah. were recording it, and I lit a lighter... <laughs> And we kept shooting that show, <laughs> and we didn't skip a beat. No. I think Dirk Reynolds was talking about curves yeah, and radiuses. Yeah, yeah. Was Chris Palomares on that show Daniel with us? Daniel was here. Daniel yeah, was here. The electric but went out for two and a half minutes. Yeah. That lighter got hot. It burnt my fingers. That was on. I was on vacation that week. <laughs> that was awesome. So, so, so anyway, all right. Okay. <laughs> so that, that's the beauty of this show. We yeah. don't have to be professionals because we're simple model railroaders. Yeah. In the best hobby in the world. Thanks. Back to Mike. Okay. I have a, a listener, or a, we have a viewer named Aaron Riley from the Chicago area who is into RC vehicles, and he has built a bulldozer, an RC remote control bulldozer that the blade goes up and down. Wow. The wow. tracks turn. So I sent a video to Dropbox so you can show some, some screenshots of it, but it's pretty amazing. Can't wait to see so, that. Yeah. And, uh, I, these trailers here are a couple of Trainworks trailers. Uh, they're coming out with some new ones, I think in November, a new run of these with uh, the ones I'm excited about are Penn Central and Mopac. But the Illinois Central trailers, I missed out the first time when they came around. So I got a couple uh, undecorated ones and used microscale decals. That's what I've been working on this week to finish those um, and weathered them you know, for my era. And uh, I'll be running them on the Walters. You know, they're, they're coming out with uh, another run of those G85 flat cars, too. Yeah, I pre-ordered right. mine this time. So. Right. Isn't that so. Monday, I'm pre-ordering um, some Amfleet coaches and some Horizon coaches. Those are the square ones. Yeah. To go with those new Atherin P42s. Yeah. I've got no cars to put right. behind them. Those are nice. And I models. agree with this pre-order stuff because if you want it, you got to get yeah, it, right? Yeah, right. So rock so. and roll on Walters for that. Yeah, a couple other... People I wanted to give a shout out to is Mike Kelly. I was talking to him today. Oh, and he's, Mike was in my wedding. Yeah. Yeah. He, yes. He's got a couple of books. He's got one book, uh, Rails Around Missouri, that I, it's like a Bible to me. Yes. And uh, uh, I thought he ought to come on the show sometime. And he, you know, he's a really big train he, train lover. He's been taking pictures since he was a little kid, just like you, man. Yep. And uh, so anyway, Mike. You're invited anytime you got a Absolutely. standing invitation. Mike Kelly is amazing. Mike Kelly used to work at the Great Train Store downtown. Yes. And I believe we've had him either on a podcast or he was on the What's Neat show. And I think he was talking about his book and showed some pictures. Mm -hmm. But we'd be happy to have he Mike back. He was here last year or the year before. I'm, okay. I'm two weeks behind on email. So I'm, i got to say, forgive me for not getting back to folks yeah. on email right away. I also talked to Scout Newart this week. Oh, okay. Scott is yeah. an avid model uh, modeler. Mm -hmm. uh, Lionel and uh, Marklin. But yeah. he also is a big-time rail fan. Uh, if right. you've ever seen his work on Facebook, he's always shooting photographs right. around St. Louis. He's an engineer. He was a, a locomotive right. engineer. Right. Mm -hmm. What a great area. guy. Um, so so uh, shout out to Scott. Uh, yeah. just, you're, it's, I look forward to that show, too, as well. Um, is there anything else, guys, that we need to cover? Charlie and George, have we covered everything on this one? Oh, uh, this little VW. I'm happy. Okay. Mike? What do you got? I just want to show this, this car. This is the most organized uh, show. <laughs> this is an AMW uh, Volkswagen, and the reason I got it is because the hood actually opens and it has a motor inside of it. So uh, oh, I want to detail cool. that out. That's a, an unknown company to me. 
So uh, very cool. It's amazing but the vehicles that are coming out now. I Woodland know. Scenics has been coming out with some really cool yeah, fire trucks, and new vehicles. Cool I went to Mark Twain this week for the very first time mm -hmm. in five months. First yeah. time at the hobby shop. Did you see Daniel? I've, I've videotaped there? Daniel, Daniel stocking <laughs> the Woodland yeah. Scenics trees. You're looking yeah. at the video right now. <laughs> Daniel right. was stocking the trees out there. He also showed us the NCE uh, power system, mm -hmm. the Pro Cab that was in the case. He just he pulled it out and gave us the Vanna White with yeah. the thumbs up. He sold me a couple <laughs> decoders. He's, and, uh, he's so much fun, but he's so. got a job. He's loving his second job at the hobby shop mm -hmm. out there. But it was really refreshing to see uh, a lot of new vehicles, uh, Woodland Scenics. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of neat products out. Sure uh, Woodland Scenics also makes a line of buildings, and they're already pre-built yes. and pre-lit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of neat stuff out there, guys, and we can't cover it all on this show. But Joshua and Mike <sighs> and George Char and Charles. Charlie. I know, guys. Best hobby in the world with these guys, the best folks in the hobby. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this. I love this hobby because of all the great people that I've been able to meet through the years. Mm -hmm. And so with that, gentlemen, this is show number 133. Best hobby in the world. Let's go run some trains. See you later. All right. So long. See you later. Thank you. <laughs>